Language Change Theory There are many differing theories about the nature of language change, varying from sociolinguistic factors such as age and ethnicity, to geographical location and socio-economic class. In the early 1900s, Edward Sapphire and Benjamin Lee Wolfe created the Sapphire-Wolfe theory. This suggested that language influenced thought and controlled it. However, this would not allow for any language change at all. A weaker version was created saying language influenced thought but did not completely control it, allowing for change. A much more likely theory sprang up because of this, that thought controlled language. However, this was criticised for not enabling the ability to prevent racism or prejudice. The lexical gap theory states that words are formed because of the likely path the language would take. For example, there are the words such as confession and impression which have their stems as related words that we use. However, the words aggression and compassion do not have their stems as related words, therefore these are likely to be created. A method called verbing has created many words over the centuries. This process takes a noun and forms a verb out of it, for example using text, as in the text that appears on a phone, and establishing texting as a method of transferring that text. Emailing, ringing, phoning have all come about because of this verbing, which is in itself verbing. Random fluctuation and cultural transmission were suggested by Charles Hockett in 1958. This described, literally, a random error that was then taken up as a popular word. For example, the predictive text function on a mobile phone has the same combination for book as it has for cool, resulting in book meaning cool in some social networks. However, this was short-lived and has recently fallen out of use. The substratum theory deals with influences on a language brought about by contact with other languages. For example, the Jewish settlers in New York brought their native languages of Yiddish and Hebrew in the mid-19th century, influencing the accent of the period. This resulted in the previous pronunciation of coffee, changing to coffee, and the closed vowel breaking of door into door. The functional theory suggests that language changes to fit the user. This is predominant in technological lexis, where words that denote old or obsolete inventions fall out of use, such as cassette, vinyl, and floppy disks, and new words enter, like mp3 and computer. Furthermore, words can be created to form a sense of identity within a community, for example, chav and emo, to describe social trends. Pronunciation will also change to prevent confusion, such as voicing the h in which to form which to distinguish from which. This theory also applies to phrases and grammar, such as the integration of super polite forms to form utterances like would you mind terribly. The wave and s-curve models of language change. Linguist Chen in 1968 and again in 1972 proposed the idea of the s-curve model. This described the nature of language change as a gradual one. Here is an example of a vowel shift. Firstly, adaption would be slow, then accelerate as other words and similar morphemes or lexemes are affected, and finally the pace would slow as the few remaining vowels are changed, forming a curve. Linguist Bailey, in 1973, proposed a different kind of adaption, one that was based on geographical distance and social strata. At the initial point of creation, the influence would move across geographical areas and social groups. The effect would become less pronounced the further away from the origin the groups are, like an ocean wave. Key to the study of language is language variation, which shall be covered in the next video. You have been listening to a Study Guys production. Make sure to check out our other videos.